Well, the most up-to-date research on cell phone radiation involves thousands of studies that have been done in animals and a number of studies in humans, and they are finding pretty consistently now that when you expose animal cells and human beings to cell phone radiation, you can damage their sperm, damage the quality of the babies they produce, and increase cancer. And the cancer risk, which is the most frightening to most people, is the one that may not be the most important. The most important may be the effects on the brain, on memory, on sleep, on recall, on behavior, on attention deficit disorder, and other things that we're starting to understand better. But I would say that at this point, there's a fairly compelling body of research that shows harm from cell phone radiation. And more importantly, even if we aren't definitive about the nature of the harm, what are we doing by experimenting with our children? If you use an earpiece um, as long as it's wired and as long as it is not running down into your body, then you are better off than not. And the best, of course, is a speakerphone or running the speaker through your car radio. Uh, then you are not getting the radiation going into your body. Well, as long as the phone is on speaker and the signal is not weak and it's kept some distance from you, that's fine. It's preferable really not to have a phone in your hand for long periods of time. So what I tell people is take it out, put it in, on a table. When you have to transport it, put it on airplane mode because it's not sending or receiving microwave radiation. Otherwise, it's programmed to send and receive microwave radiation 900 times a minute. I don't think we know that there's any risk associated with that, but in the home what we have to worry about is where is the Wi-Fi router located, how many devices are you using, and is anybody unaware that you should never have a tablet on your body? They're called tablets because they belong on tables, they do not belong on the body. So it's the multiple exposures that you get in the household, and particularly where the router is located, and we encourage people to uh, use wired rather than wireless whenever they can. Well, we encourage people to go wired rather than wireless when possible, and it actually is easier to do that. What most people don't realize, companies are setting routers so that they have two different frequencies operating, and one of them allows anybody to poach on your router without your knowing it. And so we really encourage people to call and get that one deactivated. Get the one that you need, which is usually 2.4 gig, to work in your home, but not have your house router work as a hotspot for anybody that's passing by. Of course, whenever you're in a moving vehicle that has metal around it, it's like being in a microwave oven, except that there are windows. And the oven has a window with a mesh screen so that, in fact, the radiation is not supposed to come out of the microwave oven. But again, a cell phone is a two-way microwave radio. If the person using the phone has their phone going through the car radio, so it's on the car Bluetooth speaker, that is the only way that you can use that phone safely. Phones are smart. 900 times a minute, they do a handshake with the tower. Where are you? Here I am. Where are you? Here I am. And so long as that is happening and you're in a moving vehicle, the signals are pinging all over the place. That is not a good time to be using a phone unless it's an emergency. You don't want anyone to be sitting too close to a television for lots of reasons, especially little kids in terms of vision problems that we're seeing increasingly. But a lot of these newer uh, TVs are streaming and Wi-Fi, and we really don't have good information about the levels of radiation. In all circumstances, distance is your friend. Well, in all circumstances, use wired instead of wireless. In this, it's a trivial, trivial exposure, but we are now raising our children in an environment 
that has never existed even five years ago. They are growing up in a sea of microwave radiation that has not been tested for its impact on the developing body and brain. We are doing one huge human research project without any controls. I'm not worried about infrared. Bluetooth is about 10,000 times weaker, 1,000 times weaker than wireless. But what I do not think is a good idea is to go around all day long with these expensive things in your brain, which are Bluetooth, because if they're on 24 hours a day, and there are people who are apparently sleeping with these things, playing music to go to sleep, etc., then you're getting exposed. And over your lifetime, your total exposure could be substantial. Besides, why would you put something deep into your brain with any exposure that normally wouldn't be there? There are some studies that indicate that having a phone right next to the head for 50 minutes changes the nature of brain chemistry and increases the amount of glucose in the brain. And by the way, an increase in glucose in the brain has been associated with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's has been called diabetes of the brain. Depends again. Distance makes all the difference. How close you are to the source is what determines your response. They're all forms of microwave radiation. Mm -hmm.